Hi again, this is Captain Frank. I want to spend a couple of minutes and talk to you about your boat's fresh water system. Give you some tips on how to keep the water clean, how to get it in, how to get it out, all that kind of good stuff. Let's start with, we're at the dock. And I want to actually use the water that's coming off the dock. One of the first things I'm going to tell you is when you hook up the hose to the spigot that's on the dock, make sure you run water through the hose for a little while. The reason you want to do this is, if that spigot hasn't been opened in a while, the water that's coming down that pipe might be a little ugly, so you don't want to hook that to your boat. The other thing is, hoses, when they set around, bugs like to crawl down in them, so you certainly don't want to put that in your boat as well. It's always a good idea when you finish with your hose is to wrap it up and put the two ends together so things can't crawl in it. But anyway, you want to always run fresh water through it for a little bit in case some stagnant water is in it. You hook it to the dockside spigot, and then you hook it to the fresh water inlet on the back of the boat. Now, this inlet, at least on a Regal, has been tested to 150 PSI. We want to make sure all of the uh, plumbing and stuff is going to hold up under higher pressures. Now, when this is hooked up, your boat will have fresh water coming from the dock, basically an endless supply. Remembering that endless supply is kind of important. When you walk away from your boat, whether you're going to dinner or leaving for the weekend, you want to turn off that spigot that's on the dock. You know, the bilge pumps work great in these boats, but I got a feeling you're going to run out of battery before you're going to run the city out of water. So again, remember to turn it off before you leave. The other way to get water on your boat, either while you're at the dock or certainly when you're away from the dock where you don't have a water supply, is the boat's fresh water tank. On this boat, this is where the fill is. They'll always be marked with the word water. Oh, brain surgery there. That's important to know because you also will have one that says waste. And then you maybe most boats will have one that say fuel. You certainly don't want to add water to the fuel tank or even the waste tank as well. So fill it up. Now, I would suggest one of two things with the water that you put in the tank. Number one, the cheap way is you can take some bleach, some chlorine bleach, one teaspoon for every 10 gallons and add it to the water when you put it in. So if I put in 30 gallons, I'm going to put in three teaspoons. I know that sounds not such like a good idea, but it'll keep that water from going stale. Realistically, that's not very much. If that makes you a little queasy, you can buy some stuff. There's some product out there called sweet water. There's several of them that you can season this water when you put it in. The point being is when the water lays in the tank for quite a while, you get a sour smell to it, almost like a sulfur smell and taste. Once that permeates the system, it's very difficult to clean. Which brings me to the point of, I'm hooked onto the dockside water, I've got water in the tank. You want to make sure you cycle this water through every once in a while. Just don't always run off the dockside water. This will cause this to go stale. This component that you see right here is the boat's fresh water pump. Most of them are a rotary style pump with a diaphragm and a series of check valves. One of the things you need to look for in maintenance is this filter right here. As you get particulates from the water tank that come into here, they'll plug up this filter and water flow will decrease. The fresh water system that's hooked to the dock does not go through this filter, so that you shouldn't see any damage or anything from there. One thing I do want to point out, you'll notice on this one it's actually got a fuse. This particular pump is an on-demand pump. Which, what that means is when you open more than one spigot, it'll actually increase its speed to give you a greater flow. It's done electronically. The fuse is here to protect the pump. A regular breaker won't protect that pump. It takes too long for the breaker to, to, uh, to open the circuit and could damage the pump. So the vendor actually puts a fuse right there. It's normally a 20 amp fuse. You're probably wondering why I'm at the bow of this boat when we're talking about water systems. Well, this is just to remind you of a problem that will most likely occur. At some point in your boat's life, you're going to run it out of fresh water. Even when you refill it and restart the system, the pump is going to continue to run and cycle. What's happened is you've trapped air throughout the boat's water system. That air compresses, the pump turns off, and then as it recalibrates down, it turns back on. So it's like brrr, brrr. To eliminate that problem, you need to bleed the water system. You always want to start at the farthest point from the water pump. That's why we've come to the bow. But you want to do each spigot on board to make sure that you burp the air out of each and every one. So, let's recap your boat's water system. You can bring in dockside water. Keys there to remember to flush the hose out before you hook it up. Also, you get water from your boat's water tank. 
trick there is to remember to treat that water so it doesn't go stale on you and also make sure you cycle it out through time. The most common problem is the cycling of the pump even though you've refilled it. Remember to burp those faucets and get the air out. This is Captain Frank. Hopefully you'll find these little tips helpful in maintaining and enjoying your boat.